Since using a Mac as my main computer, I found that the audio side of it is generally pretty good. It's reliable, it's easy to select stuff, it's easy to add stuff, you know, devices, but it does lack in a couple of areas. If you're in the right software and you've got hardware like this device here, the RME Fireface UFX, which has a ton of inputs, ton of outputs, loads of different channels, it works brilliantly. It's all natively supported and uh, you can select any of those inputs and any of those outputs very, very simply. However, if you're just in Mac OS itself and you want to reroute things a little differently, in Windows they kind of cater with, they cater for that by using sort of WDM audio devices. So you just have a big list of audio devices which all relate to one channel or, or a pair of channels on this device. In Mac, it, you can't do that. So that's where you need extra software, and that's what I'm looking at today. This is Rogue Amoeba's loopback software, and it just gives you the flexibility, basically, to route whatever you want, wherever you want, and create a dedicated audio device from that routing. It's quite flexible, seems to work pretty well. But I'll take a look at it and show you around. Some of you might be thinking, but there are options for routing audio in macOS. You can create an aggregated audio device. And you can do that. It's really straightforward to do that. If I just bring in my uh, audio devices um, here, this is the audio and MIDI setup area on macOS. You can just click the plus here and uh, create an aggregate device. And uh, what that does really is just merges two audio devices together, which might work for you. It depends what you're trying to do. However, one of the downsides to that, as far as I can tell, is that it tends to merge everything together. So it doesn't really give you the sort of routing options that I'm personally looking for. But before I get down to sort of my personal uses of, of this, my kind of like a, you know, specific use, I'll just give you a simple example of why loopback is uh, really, really handy. Uh, so here's the uh, interface. At the moment, we have no virtual devices in here at all. Just bringing in my uh, audio and MIDI setup again. And you can see that on this device already, I've got a, a ton of various bits and pieces. You know, I've got the standard MacBook Pro microphone and speakers. I've got my uh, Fireface U UFX here with 30 inputs and 30 outputs, hence why keeping all channels is really quite messy. Then I've got this USB plug and play audio device, and this, is just a USB mic. It's actually a, um, a Fifine K669, which I reviewed years ago. And I've plugged this in for the purposes of this demonstration, really. But if I want to do a Zoom call and I want to use my uh, USB microphone, but I also want to play some music as well. So I'm going to say, well, in this case, I'm going to bring in Tidal here as well. And I want to play some music from Tidal. And I want the people on the call to be able to hear that. If I open up the preferences here under my uh, microphone, I can select one of the devices. So I could say, right, well, I need to select the USB plug and play audio device. And that's fine. That'll bring audio from my mic, but now I can't play my music, can I? I can't, no one can, will be able to hear it. So this is where loopback comes in. So if I go close out of here now, I have to consider that Changing audio devices while you're running bits of software can mess things up a little bit. So, for example, Tidal will suddenly see a change in the audio devices it has available to it, and as a result, can kind of get a bit messed up. Let's just click on plus here at the bottom to add a new virtual device. And by default, Loopback creates a pass-through device going to uh, two output channels here. I'll come on to a pass-through device in a minute, so I'm actually going to just highlight that and do Command-Delete, get rid of that, because I want to choose my own sources. And if I click plus on here, you can see that not only can I do kind of actual hardware stuff down here, I can also do applications as well. And this is the, this is the kind of good thing with Loopback because it uses their own audio capture engine don't know whether they call that ace or probably ace because that sounds kind of cooler doesn't it i suppose but um the audio capture engine what what effectively that allows uh, mac os to do is look for a process id so tidal here will be running on a particular process id and take audio just from that process id and use it in a virtual sound device which is great so first thing I want to do on here is I want to say, well, I actually want, I want audio from my microphone. So I'm going to select that here. 
and you can see a bit of audio coming in with my with my voice here because it's sat next to me on the desk if i tap it there we go and that's routing out to uh, two output channels here so nice i've got my um thing and i'm going to rename this you don't have to call this loopback audio i'm going to rename this let's just call this zoom call or something like that it doesn't call it whatever you want it doesn't matter and now what I want to do is add an additional source to this. So I'm going to specify and say I only want audio from Tidal because I don't want anything else coming into the call that I don't particularly want, you know, sounds from the machine or something like that. I only want music from Tidal, uh, Tidal coming in and the mic. So now you can see that I've got the process ID for Tidal locked into this and this is now going to the two output channels. Great. Monitors here on the right-hand side allows you then to route to two to multiple different output so I could I could route the output of this to a couple of different channels on my Fireface. I could route it to the MacBook speakers and all that sort of stuff as well but in this case I just want it to be an output that I can then use as an input in Zoom if you understand what I'm saying so I'm going to hide the monitor section and just have our output here so if I play something on Tidal which I can't really do too much I don't know whether you'll hear it on this I don't think you will but let's give it a go yeah, you can see there's a bit of audio coming through there. And you can see that it's appearing here on the output channels as well. Okay, so what we have now, effectively, if I go back into my audio devices here, you can see I've now got a new audio device called Zoom Call, which is great because that's exactly what I want and I can go into Zoom. I'll go back into the preferences of Zoom here, and hopefully Zoom will have picked it up. I haven't restarted Zoom, so it may not. Yes, there we go. So I can now select that as an input, which means that not only am I taking my microphone, I'm also taking any audio from Tidal. And if I want to adjust the volume of that, well, I can do that through here, through the options, and um, I can do it in Tidal as well. You know, I can just control that i mean it's a little i guess it's a little bit more fiddly than like a proper dedicated mixing desk of course but it still gives you the option to bring that audio through and route it how you want so there we go i mean that's a real really really simple routing example for something that seems very appropriate in 2020 2021 uh, of, of a use that someone might have for this okay so I'll just remove this actually. You can delete these at any time. You can change them. Uh, and again, remember, as I say, if you're in any kind of software that uses sound, hard, uh, sound hardware devi or virtual devices, then it will kind of throw a bit, a bit of a wobbler a bit because, um, yeah, it, it won't expect those sound devices to just randomly disappear all the time. So um, I can just click on here and say, actually, I want you to go. Goodbye. Right. Fine. And and what I'm going to do now is show you a little bit more about my own sort of personal setup, if you like. So if I bring in my um, Fireface uh, Total Mix, so this is the mixing desk for the Fireface UFX and various other uh, RME products. And what I need this to do is essentially route the microphone to a different output than the default. So I can say to the Fireface, you know, I, the Fireface will happily give me the microphone. You probably saw it bouncing around there on uh, on Zoom when I'm if I'm speaking. You can you can see that Zoom will let me use the mic when it's plugged into my Fireface. But I want to be able to control the routing to these different uh, software inputs, if you like, because what you can do on here is you can take a hardware output and you can loop it back which kind of all relates back to the name of this software, even though they're not related in any way. You can loop it back, it's, and it's essentially like taking a hardware output, plugging it back in to, the, to another input. But it's not a real input, it is, it is, it's a software input in this case. So if I have analog five channel analog 5 and 6 here, I can take my mic on analog 5 and 6, and I can bump up the fader here, and what that does is bring my audio through. And if I enable loopback as it is here, I mean, I can just disable it like that. But if I enable it, then I'm essentially feeding my mic audio through to the analog five and six software input. Does that make sense? 
Mac OS doesn't deal with that though. It just takes the whole lot in one go. That's where I can use loopback and I'll get and I'll show you how I do that now. So let me just minimize Tidal here because it's not really required. So if I add another virtual device again, it does my uh, pass through thing. I did promise to get back to that, which I will do. And uh, I'm going to add the source now. And I'm going to add my Fireface UFX. And you can see here that five and six are picking up my audio. And that's because I've enabled loopback here. If I disable loopback, five and six, you notice they've just sort of disappeared off. Five and six are now enabled. So that input is working, but I want it as a, you know, so I can now create my own virtual device in here. I'm going to call this RME five and six, something like that. And all I need to do, I'm going to disable, I'm going to hide the monitors again. I'm just going to drag uh, five and six up to channels one and two. And then I can click on this line here and do a command delete. Click on that one and do command delete. And that's it. That's all I need to do. And I now have an input that I can use in other bits of software. So going back into Zoom. RME 5 and 6 and that is now because I've said it is in this in this mixing software here that is now dedicated to only bring in my mic but then if you know if I have something else on any other you know physical inputs or any other software inputs or any other kind of routing I can feed it through to this as I wish rather than feeding everything to everything difficult to explain if you're not familiar with the total mix software but that's i mean it's really powerful because you can you i mean this is just i'm just scraping the surface here but you can really it really opens up your routing options within mac os when it comes to audio so what's the what's the uh, pass through for well i'll just delete this uh, virtual device again and add a new device now pass through all pass through does is create an output really uh, so if I go back into my uh, total mix here again and I say well you know tidal by default in Mac OS always comes through on this channels one and two because most software won't let me control any more than that you know if I go into something decent like logic pro or anything like that then it will let me control which channel which channel set or you know mono or two channels or whatever I want to output my audio through to but a normal bit of software just picks the default and the default will be one and two but if i want that to go out to three and four or five and six well i can do that here because i can say well i've got my pass through device here going to run it through output channels one and two and then i'm actually going to put another monitor in here as well so i want my monitor to be going down to i don't know so i'm going to say seven i'm going to take take my audio to seven and eight on the Fireface. So now let me just go into here and then just for argument's sake, I'm gonna just call this one Tidal again. You probably wouldn't uh, dedicate a, an output to one one bit of software, but maybe you, maybe you would. You can do whatever you want, I suppose. So if I go back into Tidal, which I will probably need to quit fully and restart. So I'm just gonna quit Tidal and restart it just so it brings in those uh, new software devices. So, uh, sorry, audio devices. All right. And if I go to this, the bottom section here now, I can select my sound output and I have this dedicated output, which is Tidal, which is great. Because if I click play on here now, so we can see that the song's playing. I'm going to just increase the volume slightly, even though you, you can't hear the audio on this. I appreciate that. But that's now routing through and going to channel seven and eight. There it is. And if I take the names off, you've got analog seven and eight software playback. And I've now got Tidal dedicated to its own particular channel. Now, whether you need to do that or not, it really depends on what you're doing. But I imagine that if you're looking at software like this, you've probably got very specific routing kind of in mind. And this basically lets you do it all really now there is a little price to pay for this um, and that is there is a little bit of latency 
when you root software and uh, root stuff in this way. It's not a massive amount of latency at all, uh, but there is some latency there. But uh, it's completely acceptable. I wouldn't want to use it on a mic, you know, and hear myself with that delay. But as far as recording, it's absolutely fine. It makes no, you know, it's going to make no difference on a call or anything like that. No one's going to be waiting three seconds to hear you. So, yeah. So there we go, a couple of examples of how to use loopback. So this is from Rogue Amoeba, and um, I, I'm, this isn't a sponsored video. I paid for this software. Yeah, it's good, uh, good software. I really like it. And hopefully it makes a little bit more sense to you now what you can do with it, or maybe you're just more confused. I don't know. But thanks for watching, and if you've got any questions at all, do ask me. In the, uh, in the comments. I'll try and answer them. I always try and answer them. If I can answer them, I'll respond within about 24 hours or so. If I can't answer them, I don't tend to do anything with them because otherwise I'd just be kind of like answering questions all the time with s silly statements like, don't know, sorry. But uh, thanks for watching and I will see you again soon.